everyone. I'm here today taking a look at the Mattel Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Savage Strike Velociraptor, which is basically the Tiger Velociraptor from the Lost World. But it's in the standard Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous packaging. It's got quite a nice picture of the camp in the background. If you take the dinosaur out of the way, the tree house and all that. And then on the back, it just shows you the dinosaur and there's that sort of little sticker puzzle book, which is the same in every one. And here's the raptor out of the packaging, and it's a really great sculpt. It's probably the, one of the best velociraptors we've had. Now for articulation, the arms will move, even though it's attached to an action feature, they do move on their own pretty well actually. And they go out to the sides as well as forward and backwards. The legs move forward and backwards. And there's a slight swivel out to the side, not too much, but you can kind of swivel them in and out a little bit there. And then there's some quite nice articulation in the neck there, up and down, and going all the way around. So you can have him kind of looking over his shoulder and stuff like that in some quite good poses. And then the mouth opens up as well. Now for the action feature, there's a button on the back that you press and it makes the front arms kind of move up and down a bit. It's not great, but they do move a bit. You have to really press it in to get them to kind of go up and down. There you go, it's a bit better. I think you have to get them in the right position first, really, before the action feature will properly work. But it just makes them slash up and down. It's fine. I'd prefer the Raptor with just articulation. I don't really need the action feature. But it doesn't get in the way of the articulation, so that's a good thing. And like I said, this is based on the Lost World Velociraptors, which had a kind of tiger -y effect to them. They were orange and had these kind of dark stripes along the back. It's a really nice paint job, quite a simple paint job. There's only really that one colour being used, and the rest of it's orange except for the claws there that are painted, and then the teeth and eye. But for the limited paint that they've used, they've done a really good job of capturing all the detail there of the stripes along the back as well as just being a, a nice sculpt in general. This isn't the first Tiger Velociraptor we've had. There was one released back in 2018 as part of the Legacy Collection line, and it didn't look anywhere as nice as this, and I'll compare that in a minute. It's got a fantastic face sculpt. Here's the Legacy Collection Tiger Stripe Raptor. And this one had those awful big feet because it's got that jumping feature which never really worked very well. Where it just kind of bounces forward a bit. I've never liked that feature. And it just meant that the back legs didn't really have any articulation. And they also had these huge feet that made it look like they're wearing kind of dinosaur feet slippers. Uh, also the arms on this one were really bright orange and didn't really match the colour of the rest of the skin. The paint job on it's quite nice though. It's just quite a bit of pale fading as well as the orange. Uh, the stripes are just sort of a brown blodge rather than actual stripes, but it doesn't look too bad. But the funny thing about this one was that it had the Jurassic Park 3 raptor face sculpt rather than the Lost World raptor face sculpt, which is weird. But other than the legs, it's not a bad looking toy, but I just hate these legs. I hate the action feature that doesn't really work very well and hinders the articulation. I hate those big goofy looking feet. And I don't really like that the arms are so orange and don't really blend with the rest of the toy. It just makes the whole thing look a bit cheap when it's a shame because it's got such a nice head sculpt. But this new Raptor has the same uh, neck articulation where the articulation's at the base of the neck where it connects with the shoulders and moves kind of up and down. We also had an orange Raptor in the initial attack pack wave, which I always felt was based on the original Kenner Velociraptor, which was a very similar colour to that. And it doesn't quite match with these, it's a, lot, a brighter orange, and looks a bit too bright and neon really. But if you wanted to have him to build up the pack, you could just about fit him in, because he's orange and he's got some stripes along his back, like the Lost World Raptors. But the build of the body is very similar to the Battle Damage Blue, which I still think is the best Velociraptor we've had from Mattel. But this Tiger Stripe one is probably the second best. And it's a shame really, because the Velociraptors are so popular, and yet I don't feel like we've had that many good Velociraptor toys. They just keep repainting the Attack Pack one, which is fine, but it's not got that great articulation. Um, and that horrible jumping one, they've repainted that so many times, and yet it just looks awful. 
so it's nice that they've finally given us an improved body type for the Velociraptor because they haven't really reused this battle damage one much but it's got great articulation and detailing to it. And the only difference really is that the battle damage blue has the articulation point at the base of the head rather than the base of the neck. You can see it kind of swivels at the top of the neck there where the head connects to the neck rather than at the bottom. And I think that articulation point works better than having the articulation at the bottom of the neck and just get some kind of better poses of blue looking round and that it just looks a bit more natural. So I don't know why they don't really reuse this battle damage Velociraptor body a bit more. And here's the other attack pack style raptor, that stalking pose one, which I think is the least popular Velociraptor, even less popular than the jumping one. These ones always seem to clog up store shelves, and yet it's actually a pretty good Velociraptor to have for group shots. I wouldn't want all the Velociraptors in a pose hunched down like that, but having one or two thrown in there that are kind of stalking along the ground while the others are standing up really creates some dynamic group shots. And with this one that's stalking along the ground, you can have it kind of looking upwards if you want as well, as if it's looking up at uh, a larger dinosaur. So you can get some quite good looks out of that one, even though it seems as if it's in a very specific pose. Now in the background there, I've thrown in a Jurassic Park 3 style Velociraptor, which has got the quills on the back of the head there. But that's another one of those horrible jumping ones, but I do like that head sculpt. So it's nice having a group of Velociraptors that all look different from each other, different colours and styles, and really make an interesting pack for group shots like this. So this is a really welcome addition to the line in my opinion, because it's, as I say, the second best Velociraptor sculpt we've had. And that battle damage blue seemed to be reasonably difficult to get hold of, so hopefully they'll reuse this sculpt a few more times in some different colours and patterns, so we can get a really decent group of Velociraptors built up and maybe they'll finally retire those awful jumping Velociraptors and stop repainting them all the time. So thanks for joining me for this look at the Savage Strike Velociraptor and get a comparison with pretty much all the other Velociraptor designs we've had. Not the repaints, but the different sort of sculpts and body types over the years. I think there's been sort of five or six different types now. And out of those, this and Battle Damage Blue, definitely the ones to go for. So if you've enjoyed this video, it'd really help me out if you liked and subscribed. Uh, also, I've got an Instagram called Jurassic Rod. If you want to follow me on there, I post loads of photographs of my Jurassic World and Jurassic Park collections and taking them outdoors and putting them in settings like this. If there's a toy from the original Kenner line or the Mattel Jurassic World line I haven't covered yet that you'd like to see me talk about, let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.